you serve God, there is a transmission from God to you. And that transmission carries a lot of things inside of him. One of the things the transmission carry is the very wisdom of God. The very wisdom of God. That is, you can't serve God and be dull. No. You can't serve God and be dull. You become extremely smart. Extremely smart. Show me a student that serves God today. I will show you a general in the making. Hello? Show me a businesswoman that devotes her time to serve God. I will show you a blessed woman in the making. And one thing about service is that it doesn't end with you. One of the greatest forces in the kingdom that is transgenerational is the misery of service to him. Service is transgenerational. Do you know why? Abraham walked with God. And because of that, it was recorded for Isaac. And there were instances that God appeared to Isaac and said to him, because of your father, Abraham. Now listen to this. David walked with God. And God, because of David, favored Solomon. And Solomon said, because it was, he pleased my father to build you a house. Based on that, he had an unusual love and passion for God. Listen to this. When you serve God as a man, it doesn't end with you. Your children, listen to this. Every mortal man has children in their lungs, married or no married. Am I talking to somebody here? That is, if you are a single young man, you are serving God. Your children in your lungs, they are serving God. That is, when you are not serving God, you are destroying your generation without you know it. It's in your lungs as a lady. You just give birth to children that love God with passion. Because you are being a man and a woman that serve God with all, with all, with all. See, listen to me. I can tell how a child will grow by the way the father or mother serves God. Now, if you not came from a background where your mother didn't love God, your father never loved God, it is not left on you to pick up the mantle of serving. That by your time, there will be a record that a man stood out to serve God. By your time, there will be a record that a young girl stood up and said, I vote for Jesus. And Jesus, I vote for. And that is what single out great people from ordinary people. Service. Yeah. That is, if we understand what it takes to serve, you just become invincible. As a student, your GP is low now. Before you know, by service, God himself picks it up. That is, you look for something you are doing. God recognizes you based on two things. One, what you do for him. Hello? Yes, yeah, so. sir. That is have. You want to be different from all your father's children, mother's children. To say to yourself that come rain, come sun, I will serve. See, when the devil wants to destroy destiny, what he does is that he disconnects you from service. Because once you don't serve, your destiny is truncated without you knowing. <laughs> the one of the primary reasons why God created man was to serve him. The word fellowship is gotten from the word Hebrew word service. Hello? That is you serve. You serve. In the morning you are serving. In the afternoon you are serving. At night you are serving. You can't serve God with your life and be killed. Am I talking to somebody here? You, there's, you see, there's a wall of defense. There's a wall of protection. How should we serve? Serve wholeheartedly. The whole of your heart is involved. Pastor, don't, you see, your reward is not from pastor. If you are waiting for pastor to reward, you have failed before you started. You have gotten angry before he started. Listen, pastor don't need to call you. Pastor don't need to visit you. A man that is genuinely to serve, he serves, come rain, come song. Anytime he's serving. He's consistent in the morning, consistent in the afternoon, consistent at night. He's so much relevant that when God thinks about lighters, he thinks of Eru. That's a name. When God thinks about lighters, he thinks of okay. That's a name. Serve wholeheartedly. Two, how do you serve? Serve consistently. Consistently. The Bible said, don't be weary in well doing. For in due season. Now there is, there are due seasons for visitation. Once the cloud is full, it will empty itself. You don't pray for cloud to empty itself. Once it's full, the law says that it will empty itself. Am I talking to someone here? That is, you serve consistently. When you serve consistently, your battles become the battles of God. 
Am I talking to somebody here? Consistent service to him. Consistent. And service to God has nothing to do with age. A boy of 10 years can be very useful in the house of God. Somewhere started serving God at the tender age. And at the tender age, he started hearing the voice of God. And he became a major prophet. Major prophet. You become major in anything you are doing at the altar of service. At the altar of service. You become major. You become major at the altar of service. How do you serve? Serve sacrificially. David said, I will not give God what will cost me nothing. Sacrificially. Sacrificially. Serve sacrificially. Any service that is not done from a sacrificial art is not accepted. You don't have money to come to church, but you come anyway. That's sacrificial service. Serve sacrificially. Fourthly, how do you serve? Serve consistently. Consistently. Not that you serve today, you won't serve tomorrow. Not that you are in church today, you won't be in church tomorrow. No. In the kingdom, it's not accepted like that. The Bible said, he that put his hand on the plow and look at the back is not fit for the kingdom. Consistent stewardship is what guarantees resolve. Consistent stewardship is what guarantees resolve. You are consistent in the morning. You are consistent in the afternoon night. You are consistent in January. You are consistent in February. You are consistent in December. Not that you are a seasonal servant. You have seasonal a, 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 a sickness. You see some people, January, oh, I must have. Because they are they anticipating. Yeah. But once it gets to March, they are becoming lukewarm. No. That is not what God is talking about. You have to be consistent in your service. If you are in church, you are not doing anything for God. You have failed before you started coming to church. What you just be entitled to is benefit. Do you know what is reward? Reward is a confident word. How should I serve? Lastly, serve lovingly. Lovingly. Let nobody provoke you to a point where you become, you, you now form natural hatred for church. No. Not even pastor. I decree that you understand the blossom. Yeah. I thought you say better, amen. Amen. I thought you say louder, amen. amen. Who is a servant in church? A servant is a defender. You defend the cause of God. It's not that you're in a place, they're running down church and you're smiling, you're clapping your hand. You have failed. He's a defender. Two, he's a fighter for the cause of God. Three, he's a promoter of the cause of God. That's where a servant is. That's where a servant is. This year, I speak over your life. Stretch it towards me. That your greatness will make men to believe the Bible. Amen. If you believe it, you say louder, amen. amen. When should you serve? Anytime. That is, make up your mind that I must serve him.